thought of online learning, especially in blended learning sort of by association, as a total cop-out. That it was the professors who were either in institutions where the institutions were pushing them to do education on the cheap and were sort of forcing them into a mode of education that wasn't appropriate, or it was teachers who really didn't want to teach anymore and wanted to teach from the beach and that these were just easy ways to teach and not the most effective methods. I had to start experimenting with online learning abroad because I was working with an outreach group in Istanbul, Turkey, um, and we were trying to educate the public there about seismic risk, all of the earthquakes that they were exposed to and what they could particularly do to keep themselves safe. And we were this little group of people. Uh, we had all these volunteer trainers. Uh, they were super excited. They had these flipboards. Occasionally they had you know, the laptop and we would send them out to their communities and they would do these community education sessions about earthquake risk and preparedness. And it worked wonderfully. Everybody was very excited, but it was this mega city of 10 million people. And you know, even with 50 trainers, we, weren't, we were barely, barely addressing the need. So the Ministry of Education started working with us and said, let's make this countrywide. Let's integrate it into the educational system and reach everybody, or at least reach all the children. And we thought it was great, we were excited, we said yes, and then we went, good God, how are we gonna pull this one off? We can't actually send flipboards out and train every teacher in the country of 75 million people. So we went towards an online uh, approach and immediately realized we had no idea what we were doing, that our initial sort of, oh, we'll just take the training that we do face-to-face -face and we'll just make a slideshow out of it and that'll be good, we suddenly realized that wasn't going to work because there was no feedback to know uh, what people were learning. Uh, there was no way for people to really engage with the material and we were just going to be incredibly boring if we did it that way. So we quickly learned as much as we could about online learning and read as much as we could, started talking across three or four continents and started developing online material that had lots of interaction to it, lots of quizzing to it, lots of real life examples to it. Um, and then gave it to the Ministry of Education and worked with them to disseminate it. And the first year, I mean, I had thought, okay, this is, this is a different way of doing this. Is that fine, whatever. The numbers came back and it was 80,000 teachers had taken the initial the initial mini course on preparedness and 40,000 had taken all 11 mini courses and were then disseminating it in 40,000 classrooms. And I went, whoa, this is powerful. This is powerful in an environment where you can't reach everyone um, because you can't do a face-to-face -face conversation. So I put that aside as, okay, when you're doing public education, think about online learning as a tool. I didn't immediately run back to my university and think I should be putting this to practice in my classrooms myself. I spent years teaching this human ecology and sustainability course. It's all about um, ourselves and our environment, how we interact with each other and with material resources very much about creating community of learning, very much about being face-to-face -face and talking to each other and these long, deep conversations that we had in class. I thought it worked really well, and I wasn't going to change it, but during the economic recession, we got to the point where the wait list for the class was longer than the size of the class, and I realized I really need to open this up, this small, 30 student discussion class and I really need to make it a 70 student class just to fulfill the need. And so my immediate thought was, okay, well we did sort of online when we needed to go big and broad in Turkey, maybe I'll bring in some of that material there. 
and I started experimenting with a little bit of blending in that very large um, classroom approach to a small discussion class. Some success, some failures, but more than anything it gave me you know, the impetus to let's start playing back and forth with these two modes of uh, learning and find a good balance for them.